So what is going on guys, NativeVersionNight3 here with another video and welcome to episode 5 of the Microsoft Suite on the iPad Pro series that I have going on for you guys. Microsoft has been pretty underutilized on the iPad Pro, we've gotten a pretty bad rap, especially for the native applications that it has on the iPad system or the iPad OS, iOS system because they're usually just watered down versions. But now we have, you know, more updated versions of the Microsoft Suite and today we're going to talk about Microsoft OneNote, which is one that you guys really wanted to see, it was probably top 2 or 3 of the applications that you guys wanted to see from Microsoft. And there's one feature that makes this so much better than the regular native notes app. But again, I've never tried apps like GoodNotes or Notability before. So if you guys wanna comment below and say that those have these features, go ahead. But my only experience with note taking apps is strictly with Apple Notes. So moving over to OneNote has been a great improvement. And again, I'll show you guys that one feature that I absolutely love that's so underrated. But let's hop right into it. So as I mentioned in the intro guys, today we're going to be going over Microsoft OneNote, which is definitely one of the ones that you guys really wanted to get in touch with and see what some of the capabilities are in terms of Microsoft OneNote. Now keep in mind, I am on the beta program, so as you guys can see, I recently updated, updated Microsoft OneNote through test flight, and it's been working great guys. So if I want to hop into OneNote and just get right into it here, this is OneNote for the iPad Pro. Right here, you get a little splash screen from the developer to kind of test out and send back some screenshots to see if something is really working. This is OneNote in a nutshell, right? This is what it looks like, this is the interface, and first I'm gonna go over, again, first, iPad OS support, right? So let's hover over some of these things. You can see that we have cursor support all along the toolbar over here, and then if I add a page here, obviously on the toolbar again, I have all the different 13.4 cursor support add add-ins as well. And then the other thing I wanna check is if you can have multiple instances of OneNote open. So let's pop this open. And as you guys can see, no multitasking support from Microsoft OneNote, right? So, and what I do wanna check on top of that is to see maybe if it works alongside of another Microsoft product. So let's put Word over here. So it works with different instances of Microsoft. So keep that in mind. So it does multitask, but not with two instances of the same exact application. And why Microsoft is doing that, I'm not 100% sure guys, but they assume that you only need one note-taking app open at one time, right? But let me just walk you through it, right? So this is gonna be our YouTube notes test, right? And this is pretty much how it is, right? That's the title, and then from there on out, you're pretty much free to type wherever you want on the screen, right? But you can see that right here, it doesn't fully adopt that cursor support where it turns a cursor into, let's say, that line, right? So right here, it's kind of tough to actually highlight everything, right? You gotta highlight everything with a little more manual labor, right? Which again is a 2020 problem, but I wish Microsoft would update their Notes app for something like this because overall the Notes app is a great app, but I'm gonna keep continue to walk you guys through, right? So you have the whole toolbar up here, which you guys are used to just like any other text editor. But what I wanna show you guys is first in the view, right? Cause this is where you're gonna live. You know, you're gonna wanna set your settings and how you wanna view your notes, right? I'm a big, big fan of graph paper style. So I like to do graph paper, that's a little too small. So let's do it with a little bit thicker graph paper. That's how I kind of like to stick it out. And then you do have other options over here, right? Hide the section list, which you can, so that gets that out of the way. Uh, spelling is always there. You can switch the background, so go to light mode, even without actually you know, going to the system settings and changing it, so that's a nice little added additive. And then you can change the scale, change the page width, as you guys can see. Uh, paper color, so I can change it to green if I want to, but we're gonna keep it at no color, keep that black. And then you can even password protect your files, so that's amazing to see. And then before we actually start with the note taking, let's go into other sections, right? So this is the draw, we'll save that for the last portion, but this is again the insert tab, right? So from an insert perspective, you can add tables, which you can see right here. And all I'm doing here is pinching the zoom. And this is one of the things that I'm gonna talk about in a little bit, right? But yes, you can add tables right here. You can insert more, so rows above, insert column to the left, so that's all there, right? And then if I wanna Apple Z it to undo, it does work. So some shortcut functionality is there. As you guys can see, I just un did the undo shortcut in order for that to work. And if I continue through insert, you have pictures that you can do, you can add audio files, regular files, add PDFs, links, equations, add dates, even tie to your calendar, so that's really nice. And what I do wanna try to do is actually go into one of my files apps, see if I have an image right here, and if I can move it over and see if it stays. And as you guys can see, it does stay right there, which is very, very nice to see. And can you move it around? Yes, you can kind of move it. It's a little bit tricky, as you guys can see, because it's not as fluid as you know Microsoft PowerPoint or Microsoft Word, because again, 
that has turned into 13.4 and higher cursor support versus this, it doesn't work. I mean, you can still do it, but you can see it's a little bit laggy, but the images will be there. And you know, if you're just taking notes, it's plenty, right? So I'm gonna press delete on that. And now that's gone, right? So those are all the things that you can add in there. And like I said, it does work multitasking wise with other applications, keep that in mind. But now if we wanna hop right into the actual note taking aspect, right? So I'm gonna pop my iPad off the magic keyboard just so I can have a better angle. And now I grab my pencil and I wanna see if I just tap the screen with my pencil, if I can start drawing, you can. So I'm moving the screen right now with the tip of my Apple Pencil because it thinks it's just a finger instead of an actual tip. As you guys saw earlier in the other applications, it recognizes when the Apple Pencil is being used. So it looks like OneNote is a little bit behind in some of the functionality of the main Microsoft suite applications like Word, PowerPoint, and Excel, right? So if I do wanna get into the draw mode, you tap on draw, you tap on the pencil like you would on the regular Notes app and you should be able now to handwrite and draw whatever you want, right? So one of the main things that I do love about Microsoft OneNote that is lacking in the native Apple Notes app is the ability to zoom in and out of an initial Notes application. So as you guys can see, you know, this, whatever I drew right here created no space, right? So I have no more space to do whatever I want. So before on Apple Notes, I would have to just scroll down and continue that way, right? But with this, if I wanna, for instance, create a Venn diagram or something or some sort of web, right? So let me show you guys a better example. So if I go, create a big circle and create, you know, let's say CEO, I'm creating an organizational chart, right? And now I made it so big that there's no more space, right? So if I make a circle here in the middle, that fits. But then over here, I'm gonna have to try to fit in a tiny circle or something like that in order to get it done. But what I can do now is actually just pinch, zoom out, and all of a sudden, my notes app now has a ton more room to work with, right? So I can start making other circles like this and then start branching them out and continue the diagram as I see fit, right? And then continue and continue and continue. And I love, love that aspect of Microsoft OneNote. So you essentially, I'm not gonna say an infinite sheet because it does stop. So right here, it does bring us back. So I'm pretty much at the max volume of zooming out. But I love the fact that I have that option because I'm not stuck to whatever OneNote thinks I need, right? So if I undo all of that, that is one of my favorite features, right? That zoom in and out feature, which I really like. But then people ask me, first off, does Scribble work, right? So if I go into Scribble, so if I try to, you know, scribble on here and say, hello, you can't really hold it down with a finger and highlight it like you had in the Notes app, right? So if I just click on my eraser, erase that, go back to here. So unfortunately, Scribble doesn't work, right? That functionality does not work with Microsoft OneNote. Will it work in the search tab if I type in hello? Yes, so in different instances, right, through searching into the actual application, yes, you can use it, but unfortunately in the actual, if you need to convert handwritten notes to typed up notes, then you have to go into the regular native notes app to convert that. What I also wanted to show is that unfortunately, let's say, so let's say I try to create, you know, just a triangle. In the notes app, if I hold down right here on this point, it'll create that triangle perfectly. Right now, Microsoft OneNote does not do that. And I don't know any other applications that do, again, I've never tried good notes, never tried notability. But a way to go around this, and I've seen people use a lot, is for instance, if I'm going into that organization chart again, I can type into shapes, go to this circle, and then just draw out the circle, and continue to draw out, and then go in and add more circles, right? And then I can even click on here, and that's how you create perfect shapes inside of Microsoft OneNote, right? And then you can even have perfect lines that you can draw, and continue to add more lines over here, which is really nice to see, and you can see how quick it is, right? You're not, I'm not drawing anything, I'm literally just clicking and dragging and it shows the shape that I want. So I'm clicking on the rectangle, gives me a rectangle. If I wanna go with a triangle, boom, there's my triangle. And again, I can zoom out and create more space for myself. If I wanna create a freaking graph that I can put on here to kind of show off something, there, it is perfectly ready, to, ready for me to go, right? So that is the beauty of Microsoft OneNote. It's being able to kind of zoom out and have almost an infinite canvas to take as many notes as you want, guys. So. That is pretty much Microsoft OneNote in a nutshell, right? A lot of the features are pretty basic. You have all the regular typewriting features. So I can go in here, highlight it. I can format it, make it bigger, smaller, as you guys can see, right? You can, like I said earlier, you can change the view, switch the background, be able to see a little bit more clearly if you're working with a different color. And that's what I really like about it at the end of the day, guys, being able to just use this Notes app as, as my main Notes app. And that's what I'm gonna start to slowly transition to, especially when I'm trying to create larger diagrams, right? For simple typing 
and note taking, it's perfect. A very normal way to take down your notes, but the one thing that I do like about it is, again, is that infinite canvas, guys. But that's pretty much gonna do it for Microsoft OneNote. I like it, I recommend it. Again, it's missing some of the features that hopefully we get with a, some sort of update, and hopefully Microsoft gives us some, you know, unison and some universal universality if that's a word across all of their applications so we're not guessing to find out which features work and which features should work and which features features we're like yearning for right so again you can't multitask two instances of the same application so i'll try it one more time for you guys as you can see but you, you can multitask with other applications with microsoft one though so let's get out of this view and go back to the normal view so as you guys saw, Microsoft OneNote is actually a very versatile note-taking app for the iPad Pro. I actually like it and I think it's the most, you know, iPad OS ready application because again, it does take advantage of your Apple Pencil, it takes advantage of your entire screen and it just works super well with all the other systems and Microsoft Suite applications as well and also being able to access them at any single point from your phone, iPad, Mac OS, Windows, whatever the case may be, you can access those notes whenever you're ready to go. And like I said, that one main feature where you can kind of zoom in and out, so you essentially have an infinite slab or infinite page to be able to continue to note take. So if you're diagramming especially, it, this is a great thing. So versus with the notes app on the Apple side, you can't do that. And I really love that feature. And again, it's updated for 13.4, has a little bit of scribble in it, and has alternatives to auto-correcting, you know, misshapen shapes, right? So hopefully you guys enjoyed. You know, this is my in-depth review on it. If you guys have any comments or concerns, comment down below because I'll be in there for at least an hour kind of commenting on you guys and figuring out and trying to help out answer those questions that you guys have. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, everybody, we got, I believe, Microsoft Teams next up.